Chapter 28, The Mouse's Quest. From a nook in the dungeon wall, two extraordinary large ears torn, first right, then left, toward a distant sound. The Cespero brought himself in a clock and a flame from his hiding place toward the cry for help. Hiding under his hood, he blamed into the horde of one mouse and a sea of rats. Only his ears threatened to give him away. They bulked under his hood, but the Cespero quickly pulled them down. Somehow, above the din of rats shooting and pals squilking on the sli slimy dungeon stone, the Cespero heard the crying again. Help! Help! Then he heard a second voice. Help! I am here! The mouse looked up. The cries were coming from the prison cells. The Cesperos ran closer, passing one cell door after another. He turned a corner and saw even more doors. But which one? Help! Someone cried from down the dark corridor. Migri's cell face was pressing against the very window. You filthy stinky rat! You tricked me! A large cluster of rats gathering in front of the cell next to Mix, but they weren't paying the slightest attention to her. They were laughing at the sound of another prisoner weeping to a rat. There is nothing more amusing than the suffering of others. It is a human, it is a human, say one or rubbing his paws together. Not yet, lads, ordered the largest among them. Now, now, you have got to wait. It is nowhere near dinner, dinner time. Oh, come on, Smudge, a rat replied. I'm starving. Another whip, whi whimper came from the cell next to Mix. Cesperos recognized it as a one and his tiny heart skipped a beat. P. The mouse studied the princess locked door. It has a tiny slit on a window high above his head, far too high to reach. The Cesperos scanned the corridor. Behind the rats, a uh, brown sticks was propped against a wall. Perhaps the Cesperos bet, bet learn a thing or two in a school about being a mouse. Because where a human would see a tool used for sweeping floors, the mouse saw a different use. He saw transportation. He raced to the top of the broom handle and pushed himself away from the wall, propelling into the other side. The broomstick swam high over the heads of the Olivius rats. Some, something special for dinner tonight, a rat say from down below. It is a princess, say another, pushing forward. Oi, oi, says much. You wait for dinner like everyone else. The Cesperol lands suddenly on the ledge next to the peace door and leap to the to her window. My lady, the Cesperol whispers. P cried softly. Psst, my lady. Slattered, the princess turned and looked out the window. Her eyes dart toward the Cesperol. Oh, my little mouse, it is, it is you. I will deliver you from this evil man, the Cesperol whispered. He was inches away from her. Oh no, P whispered back. She tried to move, but she could she, she could not. She was still one big coil of rope. So instead, the mouse pressed close to her. He took his he took in the sweat scent of her hair, her breath. He would do anything for her. Just go find my father, he said. Take this chain from around my neck to show him you are, are honest and truthful. Oh, I am, said the sister. Honest and truthful and loyal and I know, he said. But hurry, here, take it. There is isn't much time. Cesperos unhooked the chain, adorned with a heart-shaped gold lock, and took her from around her neck. The necklace was del delicate on P, but it weighed heavily on the mouse. He held the heart in front of his arm and dropped the chain around his, him like an armor. It will be my quest, he said. Thank you, my good gentleman, said P. It was all the Cesperos needed, because mouse needs something to push in through mud or rats through a dark and stinky dungeon and flower inevitable dawn. It was a noble night to save his princess and time was running out.